So we'll just very quickly just touch, we, we chatted a bit about the pedaling technique last week for those who weren't there. Um, just as a, as a general, a general f feeling, absolutely pulling up on one leg while you're pushing on the other leg will give you the maximum power output. You've got a pulling effect and a pushing effect, add the two together, there's your maximum power. So for your sprinting, getting over the top of a hill when you've got nothing left, accelerating rapidly, starting from a standing start, you know, it's a, it's a combined push and pull movement. But basically as a human, we're designed to be upright, we're designed to walk and run. So most of our muscles are knee straightening, hip straightening kind of muscles there. So our power and our efficiency is about pushing. So, and I was saying to Daryl the other day that, you know, when I was first coached, we were stuck on the track and put onto a, you know, we had to hook one foot in the frame, we had to learn to pedal circles and that push, pull, push, pull. And we are told circle, think circles, think circles. And I didn't go far enough at any level to get any injuries from it there. But classically, I do see people with these hamstring, long head of bicep, uh, bicep femoris uh, irritations and that sort of thing, because they're pulling because their mate riding next to them in the group has said, oh, you've got to pull more on the pedal, you've got to ride the whole circle. So as a general rule, I think uh, most of the evidence is suggesting it's more of a push-push sort of thing. Are you guys still happy with that as ideas? Yep, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, quickly touch on cleat position. Listen, cleat position isn't so much of an argument here. Some of the arguments are really about, um, about what else you add onto these cleats, whether there should be shims, whether there should be wedges, whether there should be adjustments for leg length. And we chatted about the leg length uh, last week and, the, and Sandra and Duncan, the doctors with me last week, we all, we all agreed very much that because you never straighten your knee on a bike, um, you can very much allow for that bit of leg length discrepancy with a, a slight ankle bend or a slight knee bend. So a degree at three different joints that you'll hardly measure will probably change five mil leg length. So unless you're dealing with a big leg length discrepancy, you probably, my personal feeling is we don't adjust the height of it too much there. The other big thing about the feet is that, you know, we're designed to walk and run. You know, walking and running, you strike with the heel, the foot collapses to absorb shock. As you roll through and the big toe hits the ground, the, the foot resupinates or picks up the arch to give you a rigid thing to push off again. None of that happens on a bike. So things to do with pronation and that are a lot less important on a bike. Now, personally, I don't use shims and wedges a lot unless I'm dealing with someone with an injury that hasn't been fixed by getting the other things right or getting hip strength and glute strength right there. I'm certainly not averse to people who come in with shims or have been set up by someone else who likes to use them more. And the first thing I say is, I don't change things just for the sake of changing them there. So, um, so there's a few different ideas as to what goes on there, but you know, we chatted about this the other day, but still the ball of the foot is still a good starting point of a place to be for your cleat position. Slightly behind, where you don't want to be is forward of the ball of the foot because it's a sensitive area there. It starts putting extra load into the calf muscles and the calves aren't your prime mover on the bike. Uh, you know, all they're doing is transferring the power from your big, big muscles through there. But basically we look around about the ball of the foot, maybe a little bit behind. Now with our triathletes, what the research and a lot of the suggestions are heading towards is we're looking to go further and further back in the, in, in the shoe of the cleat. We shorten the lever that happens around the ankles. We protect the calf. Generally, particularly for James's sort of work at 90, 180 Ks, of riding and then getting off and running 21 or 42 afterwards there, the calves are extremely important running muscles there. So what we generally look at doing is we try and protect the calf on the bike because it doesn't give you a lot of performance. And once again, we're not looking for peak power production on the bike. So those little bits of leverage we lose aren't such an issue with, with our longer stuff. So in our triathletes, in particular our long ones, we're tending to push those cleats further back. And a few of the guys in the US are playing around with re-drilling shoes. So the cleat literally sits in the middle of the shoe. And they talk about when they get out of the saddle, it feels like you're climbing stairs because you just lose a lot of leverage there as well. So um, I talk about very much that, you know, my starting position, if someone stands in front of me like this, and I'll often get them just to shut their eyes and walk up and down the spot. If they stand like this, I certainly don't set them up like this. You know, the, the starting position is let's mirror roughly what they do. If there's injuries or particular things going on there, then we start manipulating things in or out to change that. And you can see from the little bit there that we can change. So ipsilateral, so the same side of the patella facet. So if someone's coming in with medial or inside patella facet pain, if we medially rotate them, it will change the load through there. So we, we do have an ability to manipulate pain around the knees, the way the hips move by rotating in and out through there as well. So. Um, 
if people wear orthotics, uh, a lot of the good podiatrists around make a cycling specific orthotic. They understand that what happens at the heel isn't particularly important. Arch support, maybe an adjustment for the forefoot might be used in a cycling orthotic there, but generally we won't, um, we won't use a standard running orthotic in a cycling shoe. However, if someone comes in and says, I always use my orthotics in my cycling shoe, I don't change that if they're happy, unless they've got injuries that I think might be caused by the position